So this time period for me has been very awakening, clarifying, um, prophecy. I've always had prophecy. My whole life I've been psychic, so I've had prophetic dreams and visions my whole life. And eventually I got to learn the difference between a vision and a dream, though sometimes it can be hard to tell. Um, when you have these dreams that something good could happen, um, following something bad happening in real life, and you hope that that's the, the reality, but it's not. And when you wake up in, in this world, in Earth, on Earth, you're here and you're not sleeping and dreaming of a different world or a different time and space, um, it can be a little bit challenging, but it's nothing that's that strange to me. I've always had my own sort of understanding of divinity and connection to all of the universe. Uh, it wasn't necessarily a popular concept around where I was. It wasn't necessarily something that many people wanted to communicate about, and it did get me um, pretty targeted more than once. But I just learned to not speak on these things with many people. Um, but ancestors were a huge part of this journey for me. And again, I've, I've spoken about it many times and I just wanna reiterate the importance of reconnection because they connect us to a heritage, to a lineage, to a tradition and to our um, the spirits of those around us that in this world, when we are not with people, when we're not being supported, when we're not being heard, when we're not being loved, it gives us um, a huge energy of support to have backing us up. And I think especially the importance for peoples that their whole life they were fleeing something um, and trying to hide, you know, for safety reasons or whatever it may have been, it's incredibly important for us to reconnect. And that's something that can be done with intention, with meditation. Uh, and it's amazing what can come through. You don't need um, anything other than that. It's a very good start, in my opinion. And I think that it's one of the most important things that I was able to experience and learn in this time period. And again, um, in 2015, I started sketching my ancestors, uh, and I've always been very connected to the earth and the mountains and the sea. That's where I've done my prayer, my dancing, my singing, um, way before I ever performed belly dance in front of people. Um, I was dancing at the top of the mountain regularly for years and at the ocean for years, and it was my sacred time and space. So I've always been connected to uh, divinity, the earth, the universe in that way. And that's my favorite. That's what I really like. I'm grateful that I have these spaces and places in, in this space to be able to connect um, the way that I can. But I preferred my, my rock altars in the woods on my paths and the little tree gateways that I would pray to and place my hands on and close my eyes and be transported to other worlds in a matter of seconds just by closing my eyes and seeing what the trees would show me. Their remembrance. Past and future. Is it a time that's gone by and is it a time that is yet to come? Is it both or is it one? All I know is they welcomed me with open arms to experience and to explore and to see these beautiful places my entire life. And that it never occurred to me that it wasn't something that we all did. So when I'm in the woods and I'm being myself, um, it never occurred to me that people could see it as strange <laughs> or different. But one thing I will say is that there are different things that happen in your life and when you're on a path that feels right you will have awakenings that occur i think from the outside looking in people may have perceived me however they chose to but i know the path that i've lived 
and so does everything above, below, and all around me. And that's more important than people's perceptions. And I've always known that to be true, which is why I sought company and companionship in nature most frequently out of anything. And then, of course, with my little dog, my Shwayakal, um, she too was a big part of my my support, my love. And in 2015, I began sketching my ancestors, but I didn't necessarily understand what was happening. It was just like they were speaking through me. A lot of times when I do my artwork, I'm looking at something and drawing it. Sometimes I'll do random, like um, more abstract art. And that's that's usually something that I don't look at anything for, but these were beings, these were human beings I was drawing, um, just what was coming through without looking at anything. And after that, um, I feel like it gave me a sense. And if I had listened to my intuition on more than one occasion, then this time period would have been very different for me. Um, but this is the path that was taken, and this is where I'm at right now. Something that I've always done my whole life uh, is I've always done magic, what I called uh, energy spells or energy healing. When I learned about Reiki, I realized, oh, I was doing Reiki. When I learned about yoga, I realized, oh, I understand yoga principles. Um, when I learned about different cultures or practices, I realized, oh, that's something I've always done. And it made sense to me that I was remembering it in this lifetime because I was meant to. We're all meant to. We're all meant to reawaken and reconnect. And again, when you're in America, this is a melting pot for many people from many places. And a lot of us lost our ancestry, our culture, our divinity, our language, our tradition. And it was all because we were trying to hide to survive. And that's why ancestral work is so important um, because you can reconnect to them uh, and they can remind you of who you are, where you came from and give you a strength that allows you to be here with power that is real. Now, I have always asked the universe to allow me to walk my highest soul's path. And I've always asked if I'm going to be paired with someone to have it be my highest soul's partner, because I don't want anything other than that for this lifetime. This is going to be my last incarnation on this earth. And I do not want anything other than my highest soul's path so that I can um, reach that level of consciousness and be able to rise up and leave here for good. Much of my life has been complicated and hard. And while it's been easier than some and harder than some, uh, now it has me sort of feeling like this is hell. And that the reason that people here are unable to see any other life and any other universal existence is because this is hell. And you have to be able to navigate it and, and do your best here in order to see anything else when you rise up. And there are many incarnations that occur here. And the reason that it's that way is not because that's how the earth was designed for it to be. It's because that's what people have turned it into. So it's a little bit unfortunate because we didn't need to have a planet that way. But that's what it's become. But all of the magic and all of the... Um, you know, random things that I do that's all intuitive. Um, it's all for my highest soul's path. It's all for my highest soul's love. If that person is here on this earth, after everything I just experienced, sometimes I think that my, my husband is God and the only time I'll be paired and loved and supported and feel that is when I die and I can finally be released and free and unite in heaven with my God husband. <laughs> now, something that was really powerful in this time period was that December 8th of 
2018, I put up a photograph of my great-grandmother and my great-grandfather on my mother's side, my mother's mother, and I was always told by them that uh, they are Inuit Indian um, and a multitude of other uh, ethnicities as well. Um, and through that, I began to connect with my ancestors in my morning prayers and my my photo wall expanded and now has many many different individuals on it um my dad's mother's side of the family uh i was told was uh, um choctaw and that my grandmother's brother though he did not learn choctaw um she had been learning it at one of the schools that they had and um he was singing it randomly and he said he was singing with spirit because she said you're singing choctaw and he said i don't know what i'm singing i just know i'm singing with spirit so uh, we have a lot of different bloodlines, uh, or I have a lot of different bloodlines within me, and many of us have lots of different bloodlines in us. Um, and three of the women that I made, I feel like came to me during this time period that were my ancestors, was a Berber or Amazai, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, and if I'm not, I apologize. Um, I look forward to someday hopefully connecting and reconnecting to these places and spaces and and cultures so that I can really, really reconnect. I know it's going to be incredibly fulfilling if I'm blessed enough to be able to do those things in my future. This injury is obviously hindering my ability to move forward as quickly in life as I otherwise would have liked to. And another woman was... Uh, uh, she was dressed as a geisha, or what people would recognize as a geisha, which unfortunately people believe is some sort of prostitute, but they are actually an artisan and beautiful woman. And to me, it's a representation of a magical woman in another culture that other people decided to put in danger and tear down, similar to the indigenous women. And you know, using shawls and feathers as a representation for prostitutes because they were trying to put these women in harm's way. Um, and it was all part of the design. And it's very real and really sad because it's something that never should have occurred and happened, ever. So, another woman... Uh, she looked very like, um, I guess she was red-haired, Scottish, I guess, maybe, and magical and sort of in the woods. And um, these were really powerful connections that I made um, around that time period. And then as I moved forward and started to work with my ancestral altar and ask to make the connection to them, um, of course, I was doing regular meditations and altar devotionals, which is essentially prayer. Um, and I had a very um, strong and lively magical practice in that time. And in March of 2020, which I've spoke of before, I was connected and contacted by the Great Spirit Incarnate, whose message to me was that we needed to return to the indigenous ways, which again, I am fully under the belief that Islamic principles and indigenous principles, could you come together, are the same thing. Um, of course, the extremists of either side probably won't be able to do that because it's not going to be in the consciousness ability but for most of them that are able to see that and come together would be able to connect and how beautiful to reunite cultures that are meant to be connected um, and respected, even though they may have differences, they are still one. You could argue that about all things, really, that though we're different, we are one and our differences are beautiful and through connecting with them, we could have a better world which is not a secret to many people. 
the message was predominantly surrounding schools. And though I've spoke on this before, um, I again have been praying for the truth to be revealed. Every morning um, since October 5th of 2020, praying before the sun came up after I saw the procession of kings in the clouds when I was sitting outside and they crowned me as king on October 5th of 2020. And then I began praying in the morning before the sun would come up. Very elaborate prayers. It was like 45 minutes to an hour every morning for a good while, almost two years or more actually. And then now it's a little bit of a shorter prayer. Um, I would sing, dance, and play my singing bowl. And it was my devotion. And me giving thanks to the earth as well. And the universe and all beings that are sacred and awakened. And I used to pray that from my sacred and awakened heart, um, I would like to pour my love into the earth and the sacred and awakened heart of the earth so that then the earth could pour its sacred and awakened heart into all of humanity so that we could awaken during this great time period where we were meant to. Reawakening. Now, I received many, uh, many communications that had to do a lot with, um, and I'm speaking of in meditation, just to not confuse people that do not have spiritual understanding or ability because they haven't tried. Um, and I was told that school systems needed to be, um, needed to be redesigned and returned to the indigenous ways. And then praying for the truth to be revealed every morning starting October 5th of 2020. Um, it was interesting that only a few six months later, all of the residential schools um, were uncovered. And finally, many indigenous peoples who had been speaking on this for um, well over a century who knew what happened to their family members but finally the truth was revealed and i feel like that's this time period occurring it is about the truth being revealed so that we can heal and then know peace someday because it's the only way we can move forward we've learned from the past that pretending that bad things didn't occur between people does not work so now we have to move forward with the truth being what is told and shown so that we can actually become a better people as human. Because how else are we ever going to evolve and be part of the great universe if you can't even connect with one another? It's not about picking one way, one religion, one culture, one people to be the representation of everything. It's about remembering that you were separated so that you could come together and remember you were one. After that happened, as I've posted many times about, um, I left my body or I was killed or hit in the spine with a chair and knocked unconscious. And I was given a God job to sing and dance Sacred Sights Awake. And I was told that I was um, a prophet of kinds or a, a goddess incarnate or the great spirit incarnate and that I had this divine purpose. And my response was to say, no, no, actually I'm not. <laughs> there's no way because there's definitely somebody better for a God job. And that was my, that was my argument. <laughs> There's no way I, I am giving, being given a God job. There's no way. There's many people that are better versed or better, better qualified for that <laughs> than me. <laughs> nope, not it, right? Now, I've posted a lot about the occurrences that happened after that and how traumatic and horrible it's been and um, my struggles and my journey and me trying to keep the faith and trying to stay positive. But after you 
die, though people are uncomfortable with that term because they say if you're here now, you can't have been dead. But I was dead, and I died multiple times from autonomic dysreflexia after the fact. Now, I didn't want to come back. I didn't want to be back on this earth, and I argued about that too. Because my argument was that this earth did not deserve to be saved, because it had gone so far astray and lost its purpose and point, and lost the lost the point of divinity fully, lost the path, lost the purpose of humanity. But I was brought back. And after that, um, I had a lot of different experiences in which I've posted about and shared. But one thing I tried to do was I couldn't leave here um, so I tried to do as much shamanic or um, magical working, meditative working as possible from here. And I would just try to astral project to the places that were calling to me. And in the fall of 2020, um, Algeria called to me so much. It was like such a major thing. There was something about it. There were all these places that called to me that I... I could almost remember being there. And it's because my ancestors were walking with me. And they were sharing remembrance with me so that I could be supported and be fully in my power as a human being, a fully conscious being, the reflection of God walking the earth, human beings. Now, if God... If God only focused on God's costume, right? You know, say costume as the, the work people do. Government officials, um, lawyers, doctors, everyone. It's all a costume. What you do for work, how you're represented, that's your costume. If God only focused on God's costume first and not humanity, and God's humanness, which is why humans are the representation of God on earth, because of God's form. And if God forgot to be human first, then this earth would have already been obliterated long ago. It would have been destroyed, because human beings are not being very kind right now. And it's not the fault of those that are kept busy and kept distracted, and kept warring, and kept in pain. Um, it's the fault of those that are, that are in powers or positions to do better. But one thing that was true of this time was that you were supposed to, all of you, this was supposed to be a time period of truth. It was supposed to be a time period where doing the right thing was what should have occurred. Not doing the usual thing, not doing what has always been done, which is people abusing their power, their authority, or, um, you know, getting away with things that are horrific. It was supposed to be a time of truth and a time of, of speaking the truth because that was the only way that we could have healed and built foundations of trust upon which the future generations could know peace. This was a time where we were meant to bridge the gap between many different places and people. Where we were meant to come together. Now, as you know, I've posted many, many different things on my social media during this time period, so I don't need to repeat a lot of the same things Though that tends to occur uh, because it does feel sometimes like uh, it's not being heard, especially here in my immediate surroundings. Now, in February, I participated in a workshop through a place that I had stayed when I was in India. And I was told that I was the woman so lonely that she created all of the universe so she could be known. And she gave me transmission 
from Shiva to Allah. Now, you could compare that to the Kabbalah. And if you understand the Kabbalah, um, then this will make sense to you. And if you don't, I'm sure you can Google it. It's very helpful to do that. I use it all the time. I love it. It's wonderful. So, sort of like the Kabbalah, um, only I didn't, I didn't travel the Kabbalah with a guide. That was human. I was propelled into it on my own through a life circumstance that was incredibly traumatic and wild. <laughs> But through that experience, I did uh, take my God jobs very seriously, and I was trying to do as much shaman work while also trying to seek medical refuge, while also trying to speak these messages that I was receiving, um, while also trying to move forward in my life with an injury that was really crippling, literally and figuratively in every way. Uh, was that conversation, were they um, playing a joke on me? Were they being cruel? Were they, I don't know the answer to these things, but all I know is that it was um, an affirmation or confirmation to the messages that I had already received myself. And that's all that mattered to me because my ancestors were walking with me and they've already shared these many, many messages and secrets with me. And this understanding of divinity and representation of beings on earth. The asteroids that fell from the sky as fire poured into the water of the earth to create life and rose up on the air to become what they are. Now, it's a very strange thing to say that you're some sort of a goddess incarnate or a great spirit incarnate or a prophet or some sort of prophecy or anything special or divine. Because again, the way that I always explain it is that if you can have a bowel movement, if you can shit, how can you be divine? In, in the divine worlds, there isn't that. <laughs> so how could, you, how could you be divine if you're capable of that? Um... And so to me, it would be completely impossible for the actual representation of God or the great spirit to be on the earth as a human being, because again, you know, how could that be divinity, a form of divinity? But it doesn't change the fact that there are representations and messages and prophecies and spirits and um, necessary moments in time where it needs to occur that that we have these um, these prophecies, these messengers, these people to come. I didn't come to redesign a religion or to, um, you know, put my face on anything, uh, you know, or to be some representation of a perfect human because I am not that and I would never have claimed to be that ever um, I'm like everyone else and I have every human emotion I have bad moments and good moments and one thing that happened over the past year almost exactly it's been one year and 20 days since I died from autonomic dysreflexia which is a huge deal, um, but it's been about a year that I have been angry about everything that has gone on in my life because I was thrown into a path that I didn't really have a lot of choice over for a good portion of time. And because I was young and in a position where people could abuse their power, I couldn't do anything about it, even speak out about it, because if I did, it would put me in harm's way further. That's people abusing their authority. And it started when I was very young, a teenager. And it went on for quite a while. And now that I am middle-aged, I'm a middle-aged woman, I'm almost 37 years old, and I'm speaking out because I want to bring attention to this for young people and for all people so that it can change. Um, and the only way it's going to is if those of us that have experienced it 
you know, if we speak up, we have to speak up. I don't have children um, because I didn't meet the right partner and I wanted to make sure if I brought life into this world that it was with a really solid partner and we had a really good foundation and real relationship before that occurred. But I've known and loved a lot of children and I want to see a world that's better for them. And that's something that we all have to do right now instead of focusing on what's only right for us and our families is to think about also what is right for other people and their families and other places. What are people saying? What are their experiences? What do they need? This is where leaders of the world need to come together, the United Nations, but fully with every nation being included so that they can communicate about how to make each country better. You know, talk about the struggles and hardships of each country. Talk about what you're having a hard time with and what is going well for your people. And then communicate with other country leaders so that you can actually create a better world because you're world leaders right now. No longer are countries meant to be divided and no longer is it meant to be an us against them mentality. It's now a time of unity. It's now a time where you realize that you all have to come together and work together because that is, that is what the world is now. That's the future. That's now. That's the important factor. Regenerating the molecule that is earth and reconnecting to your humanness. That's the point and purpose of this time. That's the message. It's not to pick one religion or one faith or one path or one people's to be a representation of all that is right and good and true. It's to remember that we all are, but we have to come together and remember to be human. And it's the keepers of the earth. That's a painting I did in April of 2020. Uh, which was a message from the Universal Mother stating that we are the keepers of the earth. We are, this is after the Great Spirit contacted me, March 5th of 2020. In April, I began doing a painting of the Universal Mother, keepers of the earth. The message that our job and duty was to care for all of the earth and her creatures, not just human beings. But we're not even doing that. We're too busy with warring with each other and forgetting the point to being here. There are many things that need to be done in this time period. And they're not that far-fetched or complicated to do. Many people have asked, this is a micro level, but can be seen on a larger scale too. But if you just look at my life and what's kind of occurred during this time period... It wasn't a call for people to continue to do the same thing that's always been done. To continue to abuse authority, to continue to gloss over what they've done. This was a time where people were supposed to individually tell the truth and make things right so that we could move forward and be propelled into the future. Instead of having this lag happen where there's been years of time past that we could have actually been making great change and coming together and remembering what our point of existence is. There are many things to say on that, and I've posted about quite a few of them on my social media, which is really the only way I knew how to do it. It feels inauthentic to try to announce something like this to the world on a news station or a podium, or anywhere. Because as much as I... My goal in life was to have a healing center that was self-sustainable so I was completely unreliant on society and could live in the middle of as much land as I could afford and be a part of the earth in that way and allow people to come to me that wanted to see me and then other than that, go and seek out what I needed um, and go to places that I felt called to as it happened and as, as my circumstances allowed. So being seen in that way is not something that sounds appealing or good to me because 
People are very cruel now. And as I've learned over the past two years and nine months after this happened to me, um, they don't want to hear what I have to say. They haven't wanted to hear the message. They haven't wanted to hear the hardship. They haven't wanted to hear the circumstances or the experiences, and they haven't wanted to tell the truth and make things better. Now, there are some really amazing people here as well, and I'm grateful for that, which is true of all the earth, good and bad everywhere. But one thing that stays the same is that this time period is not meant for everything to stay the same and continue on the path that it is on. It is the time period where people need to change in order to survive as human beings on this planet and to someday hopefully evolve and see that you are part of a big universe that is teeming with life. I guess that's all I'll say for now. <laughs>